From Twice to Lesser FM to Etsy to J-Hope, each album release announcement is now getting riddled with boycott campaigns for all sorts of reasons. From drinking a certain coffee brand to being seen with certain people who have been with other questionable people, there's not a shortage of reasons to cancel K-pop idols. While we have to respect that there may be some people who are truly and sincerely invested and concerned about the causes and issues they fight for, we also must be aware that many of these people advocating for these causes are either getting paid to do so or doing it to destroy other people. Or worse, both. Much as it pains me to admit, marketing and PR have dirty tricks in their pockets and there are a lot of people who won't hesitate using those tricks to destroy other idols. So as fans and as consumers, we also need to be aware so we don't turn into pawns, being manipulated to serve other people's agenda. Let us first go through the different dirty marketing and PR strategies and tactics used by fans and agencies to malign K-pop idols and then talk about what we can do to avoid them or even identify those who sincerely believe in the cause or those who are doing it for the wrong reasons. Hi! Initially, I didn't want to do this topic primarily because I feel like there's enough negativities out there. (laughs) But one of you actually raised a very important point a lot of you have requested for this topic and one of you actually raised a very important point um that the the truth is that negative marketing bad pr negative pr actually uh happens on a daily basis and it would be wiser um it would be good if other fans are actually aware of such negative tactics so that they are better able to discern what to engage with what to read and who to believe basically so i'm not doing this because i want to knock um agencies or groups that are doing it this is not this is certain i'm not trying to say that a specific group is doing it or a specific agency is doing it. i'm not doing that so this is just so you know what are the different negative tactics that companies can use in order to elevate their own artists and bring other artists down without actually getting their name involved all right so then when you see or read something online then you can you're better able to make a decision on who to engage with or what to engage with so i hope this is more even though i'm talking about something negative i hope that this will result into something positive okay If you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe and hit that notification button and share the video if you can. And also follow me on the social media links that you see on your screen right now. Let's go to the video. Astroturfing. Astroturfing is a deceptive tactic that involves creating the illusion of grassroots support or genuine public opinion to manipulate people's perception and influence their decision making. This is very common in K-pop. Negative voices and opinions are amplified, creating the illusion that something is popular among the public even when they are nothing but a loud minority. Su Jin of G-Idol and Garams of Lesser FM's bullying scandal were not met with as much disdain as publications made it appear to be, but it was so amplified by many publications. Even the hate that the upcoming group I'll It is getting online isn't as bad as it may seem. But publications and many influencers are amplifying it because it sells. One astroturfing tactic used in smear campaigns is the creation of fake grassroots movements. In the schemes, online communities are fabricated or manipulated to support an issue to create an illusion of number. Influencers are paid or public demonstrations, aka sending trucks to companies, are done to make it appear there is a widespread support or opposition. Yes, all these campaigns to boycott certain albums or releases, this is astroturfing. 
moral panic. Inducing moral panic or using some sort of a moral blackmail is nothing new, actually. But the pandemic turned this tactic into a weapon of mass destruction. Moral panic is when you induce a false or exaggerated perception that some behavior or a group of people is dangerously deviant and poses a threat to society's values and interests. It was more commonly used by political groups in order to paint the opposition as an immoral, incapable leader. Nowadays, any kind of moral, political, ideological, and even personal issue may now be used as a moral or emotional blackmail material. If an idol or a celebrity does not agree with a certain narrative or certain ideology, they immediately get labeled as immoral or deviant. Even the refusal to get involved or comment on any of these issues, that is automatically an immoral act. And any fan who continues to support idols or celebrities that don't share the opinion of these influencers or if they refuse to comment, they are automatically just as guilty. Some may call it guilt trip or false labeling or moral blackmail or just plain manipulation, but you can see Every day on X almost, keywords are getting trended about boycotts. Letters are being sent to management companies to terminate partnerships with brands, fire people in their company, or fire certain artists. It's happening with J-Hope. As soon as J-Hope announced his next album, Hope on the Street, the first order of business was to research every producer and songwriter J-Hope worked with and look for any connection to anything people don't agree with. And hot tip, you will always find the association you are looking for, regardless which side you are fighting for. Twice and Lesser of Him experienced the same thing in their recently released albums. Plans are rolling out for new jeans, baby monsters, stray kids, and others. Look, some of these people joining in on these causes are really truly passionate about the cause, but there are more who are merely virtue signaling, enjoying the influence they exercise on people, doing it to malign other people, or are being paid to do so. How do we know the difference? We will discuss that later. Illusion of truth. Repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. That is a law of propaganda often attributed to the Nazi Joseph Goebbels. Among psychologists, something like this is known as the illusion of truth effect. The idea is repetition. If you reinforce something over and over again, you start to believe it, even if it goes against the most fundamental truth. This strategy was actually reinforced by Hitler himself. In his 1925 autobiographical manifesto, he observed that most people are only comfortable telling small lies. Because of this, Hitler believes that when something big is claimed, we tend to believe it. Because we ourselves can't imagine that someone would be telling such a big lie. In the manifesto, Hitler said that it would never come into our heads to fabricate colossal untruths. And we would not believe that others could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. Even though the facts which prove this to be so may be brought clearly to their minds, they will still doubt and waver and will continue to think that there may be some other explanation. There are many K-pop idols who have benefited or maligned from the illusion of reality. Twice, for example, has a reputation for being bad at live singing. Even if you show people hundreds of live performances where they sound just fine, people will insist that they are either lip syncing or they are actually bad. Same thing is true for Jimin. A few people started the narrative of him singing off-key in a music show and everyone went on with it, even if the material evidence proves otherwise. Etsy is often called the flop group, even though they sold out their recent concert. Illusion of reality convinces people that the truth that we see, hear, feel, or touch are not true just by repeating it and by saying something so ridiculously untrue that it's so hard to believe anyone would even dare say it. The Black Propaganda 
a campaign that pretends it originates from the target, it actually intends to defame or discredit. One of the oldest recorded black propaganda was U.S. Army leaflets that Japan airdropped over the Philippines during World War II as the Americans were moving in to liberate the island from Japanese occupation. These leaflets appeared to be published by the U.S. Army, warning their own troops that Filipino women were promiscuous and quote-unquote dirty and to use protection when soliciting them for cheap prostitution. Japan's goal here was to make the Filipinos think that Americans looked down on us and intended to sexually exploit us. The most blatant use of this is in Attract versus 5050 and the Givers case. The Givers were alleged to have released documents that were from Attract, proving the mistreatment of 5050, but it turned out that the documents were actually made up. Defamation. Defamation is probably the most used tactic in K-pop. It overlaps with other concepts. It involves spreading false information or making baseless accusations to tarnish the reputation of an idol. False accusation is one tactic that is being used. It involves fabricating stories and presenting them as facts. This is what happened to Su Jin, former member of G Idol. She left the group after bullying allegations were made against her. They were later proven to be false. Shinies On You was falsely accused by a woman of sexually assaulting her in a club. Another way is through rumors and gossips. Some simply spread bad rumors. BTS was and is still being accused of Sajegi. Numerous idols have been rumored to have been dating another celebrity or for having sponsors. There are nasty gossips too. Some idols are known for having terrible body odor. Some idols are reputed to be disrespectful and others. Another common tactic is misrepresentation of facts. This can take various forms, including selectively highlighting negative aspects of a competitor's performance, editing videos or photos, deliberately misstating their achievements, or deliberately presenting information out of context. This happened to Taeyong or V of BTS when he was accused of insulting Big Bang by singing Loser when BTS got first place in a music show. It also happened to Nayeon of TWICE. Nayeon ranked herself first and Jonghyun last. Some news outlets then started making false reports that Nayeon was ranking the members based on merchandise sales, which led her to get criticized by netizens. It was later on revealed that Nayeon was ranking her preference on TWICE's merch design by deliberately distorting information or cherry-picking data. Competitors can manipulate the narrative to suit their own agenda. Character attack. Character attack calls into question the personal integrity and reputation of individuals associated with the targeted celebrity or idol. One common way of many fans doing it nowadays is by questioning the morality of the people within the organization of the celebrity. They question the political belief or the background of the people working within the organization. They did this with Lee Su Man. Despite being practically the father of K-pop, they have continuously questioned the way he was running his organization. They called him greedy, power hungry, and others. They did it to JYP. They accuse him of mismanaging many of his groups and constantly wanting the spotlight on himself instead of giving it to his groups. They are now doing it to Bang Shiyuk and to Scooter Braun. They are insisting that Scooter must be fired. Another common character attack is the highlighting of past mistakes. By constantly reminding the public of this mistakes, Idol's supposed pristine reputation is tarnished. This happened to Kim Garam, formerly of Les Seraphim. She was accused of bullying. Garam admitted to cursing and engaging in a word war, but that was enough to get her kicked out of the group, and it continues to follow her to this day. 
Stray Kids Yunjin, especially when Yunjin takes the spotlight, he is constantly called out for the false accusation of bullying against him. For many netizens, whatever happened in the past will be brought out and always at a time when an idol achieves something good. Honey traps, a particularly dark PR practice, is the so-called honey trapping. Here, a target person is shadowed or seduced by an attacker in order to put him or her in a compromising situation and to record it for posterity by video, voice, or photo recording. This doesn't have to be sexual. The idea is to simply lure the idol or celebrity they want to smear to go to a certain place or make them do something where they can be secretly recorded. Former member of Big Bang, Sung Ri, was actually a victim of this. A girl posted a photo of him after she supposedly spent the night with him. Now that we know some of the dirty PR or marketing tactics used against idols, the question is how are this rolled out and who are leading this? Is it haters or agencies? Unauthorized leaks. This is when recorded videos or voice tapes, internal documents, photos, and others are released without the permission of the person involved. Of course, these leaks put the idol or the celebrity in a bad light. Another way is through infiltration, and this is very common nowadays. Some actually work for the agency of the idol they want to destroy to find quote-unquote dirt. But the more common approach is through fake support. Many pretend to like a certain group or a celebrity. They create social media accounts to gain a following. And once they develop an influence, and find an opportunity, they start creating issues. That is what many ex-formerly Twitter accounts are doing. Now that they have big accounts and they have developed loyal following, they start conversations about causes, political issues, conflicts, and they insist on their point of view. They establish that they are right and anybody who goes against their belief is a deviant or immoral. They make demands, and anybody who does not meet their demands is labeled a deviant or immoral. And idols who have any association, regardless of how distant it is, with people they don't like are also labeled immoral or deviant. In other words, they emotionally and morally blackmail their followers. Another common tactic, and you all know this, paid comments and paid reviews. This is really very common. Many accounts actually leave negative comments or comments that will reinforce the narrative they want to promote. There are farms in countries where labor is cheap, where companies are actually set up to do specifically that. They just leave comments. And there are paid journalists or media. This is another common practice. There are a lot of journalists and writers who are closely related to certain artists or certain agencies and they constantly write to amplify the name of the artist who gives them favors or smear the name of the competition. Of course, there are bots and trolls. And with AI, trolls were actually start sounding more like human, making it harder for us to spot them. So who is doing this? Are agencies actually doing this? Or maybe fans? There are some agencies doing it, yes. It is actually way more common than you think. Now, some agencies may only be employing some of those strategies, but there are agencies that are employing all of them. There are also fans who are devoted enough to do this on their own. If they are devoted enough to raise thousands of dollars to mass buy an album, create hundreds of accounts to mass stream a song, organized enough to pay streaming farms to boost YouTube views, they are devoted enough to destroy idols they hate. So what can fans do about it? It really boils down to your own values and of course your wisdom. What does your value dictate? Does your value dictate you participate in these discussions or does your value dictate you be more discerning on what discussions to participate in? Second, personally, I always look into the reputation of the influencer. To me, it is simple. If you become an influencer, you have to show your face and reveal your identity. If you want to influence people, you better be accountable for what you say. 
If you are anonymous, I'll probably skip. Third, when someone is trying to start a movement on global issues, my first question is, what has this person done about issues that are within their vicinity? I absolutely hate wars. I do not ever want anyone to be harmed. But my home country, the Philippines, is ridden with poverty, high crime rate, malnutrition, children aren't getting the education they deserve, healthcare sucks, crime rates are up, corruption is rampant, women are getting abused, old people die alone. I have a shitload of things to do in my own community. I will do something about that first, especially because no one seems to be interested in helping my own country. Anyone who becomes an activist on causes halfway across the world from them, but isn't doing anything about problems closer to home is a hypocrite in my books. Yes, I understand that the least that we can do is speak up. But if I have any energy to use in moving people for causes halfway across the world, that will be spent on issues closer to home. If we can just all take care of our own community, there will be less problems on a global scale. Number four, understand the issue on your own. Do your own research and research both sides. Unless you truly understand, you shouldn't act because the only thing worse than not doing anything is doing something for the wrong reasons. And lastly, anyone someone pressures me into doing something they want me to do, I shut them out. I am too old to be peer pressured and too tired to be manipulated. I've got my own shit to do. My own family to take care of, my own community to help, and hopefully my own country to be of assistance to. Add all of those to my own bills to pay, I think I'm doing just fine and doing just enough. I will continue to enjoy the music that I like. Okay, I hope again that was helpful. This is not a knock on anybody. I'm not saying a certain group is doing it or a certain agency is doing it. I'm just saying this in general, these are the ta tactics that different companies are using. If you have your own contribution, if you know about anything else, leave them in the comment section below. Please, let's keep it peaceful. So don't mention groups. Don't accuse any groups. Don't accuse any agencies. Let's just talk about the tactics in general. So that everything is peaceful <laughs> all right i hope that you found it helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up of course um subscribe and hit that notification button and uh so that you don't miss a single video or you can also choose which videos will you will get a notification on or you can just turn it on for all <laughs> okay and um share the video if you can that's really helping my channel thank you so much i appreciate your support and until next time